Okay, let's get started then. Uh, hello, assalamu alaikum, welcome to this webinar, uh, Gaza's Past, Present, and Future. Uh, a discussion with uh, Wafa, Ali Aludaini, and Ahmad Abu Artama. And this event again is hosted by author and activist Miko Peled. Uh, my name is Jamil, and I'll be opening up this talk as usual and facilitating the Q&A after the panel's discussion wraps up. Um, before we get started, I uh, just want to ask everybody's uh, patience. Um, both of our uh, panelists today are, are direct from, uh, connecting with us direct from Gaza. And um, we'll, we'll find out a little bit more about why, uh, you know, this, there's a lot of luxuries that we take for granted here that uh, are not available in, 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 uh, in Gaza. But um, if you can uh, have some patience with the audio and video and everything, uh, we would appreciate it. But thank you for joining us. Uh, we are live streaming this event to Miko's Facebook page too. So if you want to share this uh, event with anyone who didn't register or post it to your timeline, uh, you can go to facebook.com slash Miko Peled official, and they will be able to watch the live stream. Um, we also make each of these webinars available to watch again if you missed it or if you want to rewatch it, um, along with any further reading or citations um, uh, at mikopeled.com. So you can find all the webinars that we've done in the past, and this one will be up there in, a, in probably a few days. So we are very fortunate today to have uh, two of the most uh, foremost activists in Gaza. Um, they're dialing in direct from Gaza, uh, Palestine today, and it's my honor to introduce them. We have uh, Wafat Ali Aloudaini. Um, Wafat is a Gaza-based Palestinian journalist, manager of the Al Thoraya Al Al Institution for Media, uh, a youth group organizer, and founder of the Palestinian Eve Network. And our second guest is Ahmed Abu Artama. He is a Gaza-based Palestinian writer and peace activist, author of Organized Chaos, and uh, one of the organizers of the Great March of Return. So today's discussion is centered on the panel's firsthand accounts of life in Gaza, uh, including their backgrounds. So, you know, we're hoping to gain a better understanding and analysis on things like the history of Gaza and, and Israel's blockade, um, how Gaza fits into the greater Palestine, uh, you know, what life is like currently in Gaza with coronavirus and in general, um, and uh, maybe Israel's annexation and how that might affect Gaza, and also, most importantly, the future of, of Gaza and its liberation. So before I, I hand things over to Miko, um, just a few things of note. We're going to keep this event um, to about 90 minutes. So the first uh, hour will be dedicated to the panel discussion. And then we will do 30 minutes or so of uh, Q&A. So um, if you see that Q&A button, if you're on Zoom right now, you can go ahead and submit a question to us at any point during the webinar. And we'll, we'll do our best to get to everyone's uh, questions. Um, we also have our event admin, Michael. Um, he's going to be uh, collecting those Q&As. So if you're having any technical difficulties or want to comment about anything, there is a chat room that uh, Michael and myself will be responding to. And we'll try to link any citations from the panel and from Miko in the chat. Um, so just remember, uh, put your questions for the panel in the Q&A section and, and don't, don't uh, muddy up the chat with, the, with that stuff. Um, and that is pretty much it. Again, we're going to do a follow-up email on this webinar so you have this information and then look at mikopaled.com in a few days to uh, re-watch this or share it with anybody. That is going to do it for me. So I'm going to pass things over to Miko to get the uh, conversation started. Okay, thank you, Jamil. And thank you, Michael, for your work behind the scenes. And Ahmed and Wafa, thank you very much. Um, for your time and your willingness to, uh, to speak today. Um, I think most people agree, most people that know about Palestine agree that uh, Gaza is a central issue and always has been a central issue um, in the larger picture of Palestine. Um, for most people, I think Gaza came into their attention 
most people outside of Palestine. I think Gaza came to their attention around 2008 with the, uh, with the massacre that took place at the end of 2008, beginning 2009. And then the consecutive massacres, attacks by Israel every few years. But uh, Gaza has uh, a long history as it relates to Palestine, um, going back thousands of years, but we're, we'll concentrate on, on, on the history of the last 70, 80 years uh, with the Zionist colonization of Palestine and the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. And so um, many people don't realize that a large portion of the people in Gaza are not actually from Gaza, they are refugees from other parts of Palestine. And uh, we'll talk about the march later on, but when people were marching during the March of Return, they weren't just protesting, they, for no reason, because their homes are actually on the other side and their lands are on the other side, so they were actually marching to go back to where their rights are, to where their land is, to where their homes are, legally are and from which they were uh, kicked out and, 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 and are not permitted to return. People don't know this, so I think it's important to discuss this. And then, um, um, and the reality in Gaza, the, severe, the severity, the seriousness of the reality in Gaza um, didn't start in 2008. It didn't even start with the siege. It started in the early 1950s when this whole Gaza Strip was created. I mean, the Gaza Strip is not a natural part of, of the landscape of, of Palestine. The Gaza Strip was created with the creation of the State of Israel, with the colonization of Palestine. Uh, again, that's something that people don't realize. So the Gaza Strip is not a natural part of Palestine. It's not a natural entity. It, it was defined by, by the occupiers. It was defined by the colonizers. Um, <clears throat> And uh, it's been a sore spot and it's been a complicated and difficult place to be from the very beginning because Israeli attacks didn't begin in 2008. Israeli began, attacks against Gaza began as soon as the Gaza Strip was defined, as soon as uh, the state of Israel was established and, and the Gaza Strip was created, Israeli uh, terror groups would go in, Israeli military raids would begin and massacring Palestinians. It began in the 50s and it never stopped. It only became worse and worse. And of course now they have better technology so they can kill more people faster. And they always have some kind of excuse why it's okay to kill people in Gaza, terrorism, Hamas, uh, all kinds of reasons throughout the years. But the reality is that um, the people in Gaza have a right to go back to their homes. The people of Gaza have a right to live. And Israel is denying this right and killing them, um, and it's really part of the larger, a larger, um, a larger genocide, really, of, of the people of Palestine. So I'd like to start with asking each one of you, and maybe Ahmed, we can start with you, um, if you can talk a little bit about uh, yourself, your background, your family's background, and then we'll talk about your work a little bit later. Yes, uh, th thanks very much, Nico, for uh, organizing uh, the event. Uh, I'm a Tema, I'm a Palestinian refugee. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Ramla district. Uh, my was expelled out in 1940. Then they came to Gaza. And I was born in Rafah, the city between Palestine and Egypt in 1984. Uh, I'm a writer and an activist. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I studied uh, the uh, idea of the Great of Return. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea of the march of return on 1911 idea is how we as refugees how we should uh, uh, try to end our thing and to struggle to implement our uh, our normal right to return uh, this is our human and our political right now I'm an activist in uh, the 
uh, in the field and also in the humans here in Gaza Strip. <coughs> okay, thank you, Wafa. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, this uh, webinar. It's a great, a great pleasure actually to be with you uh, in this uh, webinar. Um, about me, actually, I'm a Palestinian journalist based here in the Gaza Strip, and I'm a Palestinian refugee. Uh, my parents and grandparents were forced to eject from their uh, homeland in uh, Per Sheba, uh, just a few meters from here, but I never uh, go there. Uh, I never had that, the opportunity actually to go to the, these areas. Um, I'm an activist as well. I lead a youth group called 16th October group since uh, 2013. We are a group of young journalists. Uh, we report about what is happening uh, on the ground here in the Gaza Strip and in whole Palestine. Um, actually, I was born uh, in the first Intifada, during the first Intifada, and I witnessed the all kind of brutality by the Israeli occupation forces. Uh, you know, uh, all I know since I was young, just uh, the onion, I just keep uh, the onion uh, in my hand just to protect me from uh, the tear gas that the Israeli occupation forces used to fire toward the people uh, in, in my town. Um, and during uh, actually the, these years until now, I survived the three or, or over than four deadly aggressions on Gaza. And uh, actually when I decided to join the university, I, I entered, I, uh, my major was English language. And then because I used to, uh, to watch CNN and watch BBC, so actually it was so disappointed to watch such mainstream media because uh, I just, I live here in Gaza, I live here in Palestine and I witness every brutality by the occupation. And then in the, the mainstream media and CNN and BBC and you know the like, they just report that uh, terrorist Palestinians attack Israelis and the stuff. So it is just, it, it is, uh, they are just distort the image of Palestinian people. So since that time, actually, um, uh, we have, yeah, journalists here, but none of them, you know, speak English. That's why maybe they cannot, you know, uh, convey our message to the world. So I decided to, to, uh, to take some courses and, you know, train myself to be a journalist and to be, to report exactly what is happening here in, in the Gaza Strip, to report exactly uh, uh, what is, uh, what, what the, my people face uh, uh, from the Israeli forces. And uh, actually until now, I, I, uh, I contributed to several, uh, uh, several radio, several publications, um, I wrote for them, I uh, did uh, several broadcasts, uh, and until now I lead uh, a youth group that I told you before about it, uh, that uh, consists of, uh, 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 you know, young journalists, uh, students, uh, English students and the graduates, and uh, we just uh, do some uh, videos, produce videos, and sometimes we produce uh, broadcasts just to to report exactly what is happening here on the ground of Palestine, because we are the people who are oppressed, and then in the mainstream media, we are just uh, look like that we are the oppressors people. That's why you know the, the, this is the main aim of of, of us. And um, yeah, this is all about me. I can say. It. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and you and I worked a little bit. We, I, I worked with yeah. you a little bit. That uh, was the last year for yeah. months. Yeah, it's an honor actually to work with you. You actually you edited so many of our newsletter of you, of our broadcast, and we were so happy, you know, to have you, you know, to have your opinion and to your editing to our uh, work, of course. So thank you for so much for that. No, thank you. Yeah. It was my, the, the honor was mine. Um, so I, I, I want to mention two things um, about Gaza within my own my, my own life. Maybe you know this, but um, uh, when Israel occupied Gaza in 1956, 
um, during the Suez campaign, my father was the military governor of Gaza. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew that. And then, yeah. um, you know, you hear about Gaza growing up as, as, as an Israeli, but you don't really know. But anyway, I always heard about that from his perspective, from that, from that, uh, from that story. And I wrote about it in my book, in the General Sun. When he left Gaza, he wrote a very interesting report. I think it may have been the first report written by outsiders uh, that recognized, that talked about the refugees and where they came from. And so it's all, it was all written down. It was very interesting. And then um, actually the only time I ever visited Gaza was in 2013 when uh, some friends on Facebook asked me if I would agree to come to Gaza by subway. Hmm. And so I understood hmm. after that they meant by the tunnel and then eventually it worked out. I, I went through uh, Sinai to Rafah from Rafah. It was a very long and interesting uh, experience, but I spent about a week in Gaza and that was, um, uh, that was very interesting uh, because you can see, like you said, you are five minutes from Bersaba. You can see Eskelaz, yeah. you can see them. And yeah. so many people in Gaza are from these places. Yeah. Of course, nobody can go there. Um, yeah. And um, so anyway, that's, uh, I, I think, um, I, in my experience, the, this, the, this Gaza is a central issue in, in, in all of this. And of course, the last few years, um, there has been the March of Return. This has been the thing that people talked about. And the entire world saw how Israeli soldiers, snipers are just murdering, murdering, murdering um, Palestinians who are, who are protesting, who are marching. And I think people don't understand why, why these young Palestinians would come back every week, every week, every week, every week. And, you know, two questions I have for you, Ahmed, uh, about this. One, maybe you could talk a little bit about what is the motivation? Uh, all these young people, uh, so many of them, every single week, marching, knowing full well that the soldiers are there waiting. And they don't care if you're a medic, they don't care if you're a child, they don't care if you're a man or woman, they will shoot and they have shot. And the second thing I want to ask you uh, is, how do you think it's possible that the world can see this and nothing changes? So, yeah. Yes, thank you, Miko. Great question. Uh, great to question. Uh, yes, there are a lot of, uh, there are many reasons how we, at the point, uh, the March of Return started. Uh, the root of the problem is actually on 1948. In 1948, when uh, the Zionist movement came, uh, you know the moment of the establishment of the, Israel, the state of Israel. It was then the that's sorry, English sometimes. Uh, uh, Palestinian people. So they became, became refugees. Here in Gaza, uh, about two thirds of the population are uh, 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 including my own family. They are uh, originally from what's Israel, but because the, the, the Nakba on 1940, they were expelled out uh, by force and they came here in Gaza. So even geograph geographically, territory, Gaza is not a, 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 is not a proper place for two, four million people. This is the number of the population now. To Gaza is uh, about uh, uh, 141 square uh, uh, miles. Uh, so it's of the highest population in the world. This is what, what wasn't by the nature. This was by the Israelis, by the Israeli uh, uh, exp expelling the people and became their armies. Then after that, uh, you know, in 1967, Israel occupied Gaza Strip directly. 
And uh, after the 2005, uh, it uh, claimed that it will open, but it's actually uh, 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 continuing to lengthen every move, movement. Uh, no person can, uh, and you personally, you said that when you, it's time you did it to Gaza, it was, it was not the formal uh, gates, but uh, by the tunnels, because Israel uh, don't usually uh, allow for foreign people to enter Gaza, and don't allow Gazans, the Palestinians of Gaza, to leave from Gaza, but with a lot of restrictions and uh, a lot of uh, uh, conditions. And uh, the materials, the sea, the, the, the sea we have here, but the Navy, uh, the Israeli Navy is controlling the coin. It prevents us from leaving it even from the uh, exploiting the gas field, which was discovered on the coast of Gaza Strip in 1990. Uh, and uh, with uh, uh, Israel also, when it uh, uh, the blockade of Gaza Strip, this blockade, now we are about 13 or 30, 14 years from the beginning of this blockade. And this two long time generations hundreds of thousands of youth growing up and they never saw anything outside of gaza they cannot they they cannot uh, uh, get the all basic uh, uh, rights uh, uh, including the uh, free movement including the 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 job they see uh, the future. They cannot live their life normally. So it's, it's a very horrible. It's, it, it, hundreds of people in Gaza, especially the new generations after the blockade, never, uh, so they, they never speak with any outside of Gaza. Like I, I, I like now with you, Miko, they never speak with anyone outside of Gaza. So yes, Israel killing us is murdering us by bullets, but also killing us by stripping our humanity, by isolating us from uh, our uh, normal uh, uh, connection with the. So when I united the state, I met you at, at that time, and it was my pleasure. I spoke with all that is uh, on purpose uh, 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 through the, the seeds of the violence. What, how? Because when, uh, when you make the, 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 the walls between people, when you build the walls and, uh, and build the fences and imprison millions of people inside those prisons, what, ca ca what can you imagine on the site of, of those persons? So the Great March of Return, uh, 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 when it came in 2018, yes, I was the first the person who uh, uh, called the people this is the first time on my Facebook, but this was not the actual uh, uh, reason for the Great March of, uh, of, of Return. It, it, it can, it, it may be a, a, a normal post, like any other post, and a few, uh, few hundreds reacted with it at that moment, and then uh, nothing will be... Uh, but why the people reacted with this idea? Because it touched their hearts deeply. Because the people, uh, that they, they feel deeply that they are not, they are not, they don't live normally. They don't have their basic, uh, their basic uh, 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 rights. And I think this is very important. Many, many of the journalists from Europe and United States asked me that uh, uh, the people in Gaza death, and this is why they go to the fence. I said to them, no, they love the life, but they love the life with dignity. 
they love the life with the freedom. And this is why they decided to participate in the Great March of Return, because they love the, they love the life. They decided that we should discuss conditions of despair, conditions of, uh, of, uh, 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 of death, of slow death here in, in Gaza. So I think the March of Return was a scream of life. Was as was as uh, was an expression of the will of life among the Palestinians. Uh, this is the first question. The second question: uh, 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 Why nothing get changed in the water the March then? I is because of the nature of the of the uh, international community, of the international regime, unfortunately. Because uh, uh, you know the, 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 the governments don't care uh, about the morality. They are care only about their uh, interests with Israel. And even if their interests was, was at expense of human rights, was at, at expense of the international law. And this what make that our struggle is global a struggle we should struggle everywhere yes we struggle here in palestine but we should struggle in the united states we should struggle in the european union we should struggle everywhere to make popular lobbies that push governments take in consideration human rights to take considerations the international law it's Horrible to imagine at the European Union and the, the administration of the United States, they are still uh, 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 f fund the, uh, the Israeli government and they that this become uh, this this becomes bullets that uh, kill the kill the uh, civilians. And this money of the taxpayers of the European American people come here in Palestine to uh, 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 fences and settlement and uh, uh, bullets and like this. So we should make this struggle a global struggle. We struggle why? Simply we struggle because we want this world to become more morality, to become more not to, to fund, not like the regimes that uh, uh, based on uh, uh, based on colonialism, based on occupation, on ex expulsion, and based on uh, annexation of territories of the. Yes, um, and what's interesting is that. On top of that, Israel has been very successful, of course, in its um, <clears throat> in its propaganda and its anti-Palestinian propaganda. And uh, we've done a couple of panels uh, here um, over the last few weeks about just even how the Zionist groups in America are involved in making sure that the textbooks in public school in America if they talk about Israel and the Palestinian uh, situation, if they talk about this issue, that they talk about it in a way that makes the Palestinians look like terrorists and the Israelis look good. And they invest millions of dollars and they invest a lot of time and effort and so forth. And they have organizations here in the United States that only work on that, making sure that the textbooks in America, in public schools, always show the Israeli point of view, the Zionist perspective. Um, and it's a terrible thing because, you know, there's this myth, all these myths. The myth of Israel, of course, the whole Zionist story is a myth. Uh, but there's another myth, I think, that's even more dangerous, and that is the myth of, of Palestinian terrorism, that there's such a thing as Palestinian terrorism. So Palestinian resistance and the fight, the Palestinian struggle for uh, liberation is always... See, portrayed as, as, as terrorism. And of course, that's a myth. That's not true. The, the, I don't, there's never been such a thing as Palestinian terrorism. 
Palestinian resistance has always been legal. Palestinian fight for freedom has always been within within the realm of, of, of what is uh, right and legal because it's been their right. Um, <clears throat> Wafa, you, to, you, you talked about you talked about working with uh, working with young people, working with journalists. You're very active yourself, and you write. I'm interested to hear what what do, what kind of conversations do people have? What kind of things do young people think? How do they see their life? How do they see the future? How do they connect what happened to them historically to what is happening now and where this is going to go? It'd be very interesting to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, um, of course, uh, the Palestinian youth here suffer the most uh, due to the severe occupation of Palestine. And they, 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 they find themselves that they are uh, being, you know, uh, the, their rights being violated by the Israeli forces, by the Israeli authorities. And they feel that they are not living like, you know, the, their life, you know, like other people across the world. So they are just uh, disappointed of this world, disappointed of the international community, disappointed of the ministry media. So they want, you know, to speak for their rights, but they don't know how. Actually, they try all the means just to, uh, to speak up, just to speak for their rights, that we, we, are, we, are, we are being died, uh, you know, slowly here in Palestine due to the severe occupation. And nobody act to stop this occupation. Nobody even just, you know, uh, condemn uh, what the, the, the Palestinian youth here are facing. So uh, uh, instead of, uh, you know, looking for uh, them, themselves and the staff, they are just fighting for their, uh, their people. They are just fighting, they are just speaking for their people. So they just allocate their time to, uh, to use the social media, uh, the different uh, platforms of the social media to speak for their, their people, just to, uh, to report about uh, the Palestinian suffering here in Palestine and the Israeli violations against them, as well as uh, they also report about the, the successful stories and the stories of uh, persistence, the, the stories of resistance, you know, the stories of the, 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 the youth that have, you know, so many talents, okay, they are so talented people, but they don't find opportunities here in Palestine due to the, the lack of many things here in Palestine. So uh, they are just um, disappointed, as I said, and devastating of, of, of you know, feel that nobody uh, acts uh, for, to stop this occupation or to ask for their rights. Uh, but on the, and on the other side, they do not stop. Actually, they they just um, I uh, uh, actually tomorrow we are launching a Twitter storm. Uh, this Twitter storm is about the successful stories uh, by uh, Palestinians here, whether in Gaza or uh, or in the West Bank or even in Jerusalem. And uh, actually, those uh, those stories are. Uh, like uh, we have so many artists and, and I'm sure they are so talented but they don't have uh, the, the, the voice to, to participate or they don't have the opportunity to go outside and participate in, in festivals or in, in exhibition outside Palestine. Uh, so, uh, for example, we have uh, people who uh, create like recycling uh, things and uh, and doing stuff from nothing you know and uh, i'm sure that if those people uh, you know if they don't have occupation if everything is open in front of them we are sure that those people will do many things will do many creative things uh, just just uh, for 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 one story or two uh, like um, I, I know some of uh, the youth here that uh, use their art to uh, uh, to uh, to shed the light on what is happening in Palestine. Like uh, uh, for example, they they just uh, instead of uh, drawing like flowers and drawing like uh, about nature and the stuff. They are just stuck in a drawing about occupation, about Israeli tanks invading their towns, about uh, many horrible things, uh, unfortunately. 
but uh, in fact uh, we have so many uh, talents here in, in Palestine we have so many uh, abilities those those youth uh, you know have like strong power like they are so powerful uh, whether in I mean in their persistence uh, but uh, if those people you know has uh, if those people get the opportunity to be something like to, to have uh, all of uh, the things and I'm sure they will be like uh, a very, a very helpful, a very useful uh, persons for not only for Palestinians but for all the world. Because uh, a few, few, um, actually, those people are not calling for only Palestinians, and that's it. They are their message are for humanity. They're called for 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 humanity, not not only for for Palestinians, because they are oppressed and they just feel what does the occupation mean, what does the injustice mean. So whenever they face, for example, uh, they see what is happening in Syria or what is happening outside Palestine, they just support them by, by all the means that they have, whether uh, if they can do like a Twitter storm or if they can do like videos or stuff, just to, uh, to support them. But because they, they just feel of them, because they just, uh, you know, experience the, the same thing uh, that, that those youth or those people uh, are facing from uh, whether uh, internal uh, power or, uh, or international. Uh, and, and, and actually for, for the, the youth here in Gaza, actually, uh, let's say that before like, um, uh, uh, before a few years, uh, like uh, in 2008, for example, when there is offensive on, on the Gaza Strip, and nobody reports, or it just very few people who report about exactly what uh, the massacres that the Israeli occupation committed to Palestinians, the, 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 the brutality that the Israeli occupation committed for the Palestinians. And nobody say anything. But uh, during actually the, the, these years, uh, and we have we have uh, like uh, hundreds of activists, Palestinian activists. They are just they they have the, the the chance to use Twitter, to use Facebook, to use Instagram, just to report exactly what is happening. Not like you know, for for example, the Israeli uh, side. You know, they are trying to to distort the image of Palestinian. We are fighting Hamas. We are fighting you know resistance. We are fighting the the terrorists here. But this is a very wrong because uh, you know that uh, uh, like in 2002, before that, uh, we don't have any rockets uh, here in Gaza. And even Hamas just uh, were founded on uh, the 80s. And the Israeli occupation authorities actually, they committed so many crimes, so many massacres before uh, in 1948, before any any resistance, you know, uh, founded here. Uh, I, I mean, the, the Israeli, the, they just use justifications just to kill more people. And I'm sure that uh, they are just, uh, if, if they ended any of the resistance factions here, they will uh, look for anything else just to make that we are uh, targeting uh, the, the, those people because blah, 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 you know, another justification for them. And for example, if you look to the West Bank or even in Jerusalem, they are being, uh, uh, you know, uh, they are being oppressed every single day. They are being, uh, their, their towns, every day the Israeli occupation just uh, uh, invaded their towns, arresting the, the youth, arresting women, arresting minors. And, and, and you know that in the West Bank or Jerusalem, they don't have like uh, rockets. They don't know that uh, resistance, but uh, but uh, but uh, you know that the Israeli occupation they just um, has this uh, uh, power uh, convince the world that we are just defending ourselves as Palestinians are animal and they they don't have uh, any right to defend themselves. This is you know the the the, the thing. Uh, and and the, the Israelis are the, they are just protecting themselves and defending themselves, and that's it, you know. So um, yeah, uh, again for sorry, again for the youth here. Uh, really, they are they have uh, uh, this is a message actually to the whole world. 
uh, we have so many uh, talented persons here. We have so many uh, young young persons here in, in Palestine, in Gaza. Uh, they are just give them the opportunity to prove to the world that they can do, yeah. can yeah. do whatever, I mean, the world needs. Um, I think yeah. anybody, that, anybody that's uh, worked with people in Gaza uh, has the same impression of this um, incredible talent, a desire to work hard, everybody has degrees. I mean, the level of, of, of optimism is, uh, is, is really shocking. I mean, I, I worked a little bit, I worked a little yeah. bit, we are not numbers with, uh, you know, kind of with young people writing stories. Uh, incredible yeah. stories. Uh, you know, my book was translated into Arabic by Dr. Uh, Mahmoud Al Hitani from Gaza, from Gaza, who was a good friend of mine. He translated it into Arabic. Mm -hmm. I mean, the connection, right. uh, the work, you know, is 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 uh, that is happening in Gaza yeah. is incredible. And you're right because the problems, uh, the fight, the killing of Palestinians does not only go on in Gaza. Of course, they they always have an excuse. Rockets, Hamas, this, that, the other. But if they don't want resistance, they, they should allow people, if people go back, to, are allowed to go back to their homes, there'll be no resistance. And like you said, you know, mm -hmm. the Sabah and the Nakab is, is really right there, right next to Gaza. And only in the last three years, 2017, 2018, 2019, Israel demolished 2,000 homes, more than 2,000 homes each year of the Palestinian Bedouin in the Nakab. 2,000, more than 2,000 each mm -hmm. year for three years. And these are citizens of Israel. These are citizens of Israel. Of course, they're being uh, denied water and so forth. So the, 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 the Israeli assault on Palestinians, the ethnic cleansing, the genocide goes on throughout the entire country. Um, Ahmed, I want to go back to you. When I, when I heard you speak, you gave an excellent speech here in Washington, D.C. Um, and you have a larger vision for Palestine. You were not just focused on this, uh, the march and your work was not just the march. You have a larger vision, um, <clears throat> which includes the right of return, of course, which includes the decolonizing of Palestine. Uh, can you talk about that, uh, that larger vision into the future and, and these two aspects of it, the decolonization and the right of return? Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, uh, we hear the, the pro-Israelis, they speak a lot that the situation in Palestine, Israel is very complex, it's very complex. But I hear with, uh, uh, with Elam Pape when he said that, no, it's not complex, it's simple. The uh, uh, cause is very simple and the people who say that it's very complex, they say to give their, themselves justification not to, uh, uh, to, to take their uh, moral, uh, uh, moral uh, rule. Uh, I, I would like to, to, to start from the, uh, commenting on what, what you mentioned about the, uh, 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 the, uh, the calling the resistance that it's uh, terrorism. It's illogically uh, uh, at, and it's unfair when you want to read a novel, a story, to the book from the middle, you should start from the first page, understand the story. And this is the problem here in Palestine. Uh, if, if anyone, any person, want to understand any cause uh, uh, in Palestine, in South Africa, in uh, India, everywhere, he should uh, understand it and start uh, started reading it from the, uh, the beginning. So the beginning of the uh, uh, cause started on 1948 when the people here in Palestine, the Palestinian people, they were living peacefully in their, in their villages and when the uh, 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 Zionist movement came uh, 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 and uh, decided to establish the state of Israel at expense of the native people here. So the uh, uh, hundreds of thousands at that time of the Palestinian the native people became refugees uh, and they uh, went to the uh, Gaza Strip, the West Bank, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon and other countries. 
and also it doesn't uh, stop at that year. The Nakba is still continuing until now. It's a continuous, uh, 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 a continuous uh, 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 since 1948 until until now. Uh, as you mentioned about the de demolishing the houses, this is an example. Other examples: the sieging, the the, the settlement, the uh, annexation, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the massacres, tens or hundreds of massacres for the Palestinians. So there is a deep uh, uh, suffering, a deep tragedy in every single uh, house, in every single family. I'm sure uh, if I if I knock the door of any home uh, here in Palestine in Gaza Strip and I ask the the the, 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 the owner of that uh, house, tell me any story you have it in the last thirty on the last forty years. Sure, he I will find a tragedy in uh, with him. Uh, maybe his he lost his son. Maybe uh, he lost his house. Maybe he uh, spent ten or twenty years in the Israeli prison. So no single Palestinian family without a tragedy, without uh, sadness. So this is th th this what we should remind the world that you cannot build your leisure. You can build your your existence at expense of a whole other people, uh, millions of other people. This is not a, a, a real settlement. This is not real peace. This is not real security. The real security, the real peace, you can feel it when it, uh, uh, it, uh, 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 it comes from your side. When I feel that I didn't have any injustice committing Toward others, then I will achieve the peace inside me. So, again, it's very simple. The cause here is very simple. It's not complex. There are there is a complete people, a whole people, the Palestinian people. They are under the colonialization. They are under the uh, expulsion, under the occupation from seventy-two years, and. We try to raise the sounds, the voice of the conscious, the human conscious around the world and here in Palestine and in Israel. When this voice were raised, then we, we, we will say it simply. Uh, this occupation should be ended. The, refuge, the suffering of the refugees should be ended ending suffering of the Palestinian people should be ending and at that time I think we will not feel we will not feel uh, 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 find, uh, a serious difficulty to make the peace and to make a real solution because it will be a solution based on the security and the freedom and the human rights for everyone this of who is he if he is a Jewish or he is a Palestinian, if he, if he is David or he is Muhammad, at that time, I'm sure that we will, uh, uh, we will uh, make the solution. Yeah. Um, well, Fa, I'll ask you the same question, uh, the issue of uh, the future and how are young people or all people, actually, not only young people, because uh, old people are alive too, and uh, and I'm sure they have thoughts and dreams and wishes. But um, there's not going to be a peaceful Palestine until there's a decolonization, until Palestine is decolonized, until the Zionist <clears throat> regime collapses, until um, the refugees are allowed to return. So the right to return is not a idea, but can materialize. Um, yeah. What do you see as a process to get to that point? Do, you, do people talk about, do you think, what do you think about, what is the process that, yeah. can, that can get us there? Yeah. Um, actually, I do believe in something that the injustice will not last forever. 
so the this day will be uh, so so near so close to us i'm sure that this injustice will end very soon because uh, what is wrong it will never uh, last forever uh, and and actually for for your information i'm i'm talking for example about my parents uh, my parents you know um, uh, they are refugees uh, my father was only five years old when he forced to uh, eject from uh, uh, his uh, town or his uh, village. Uh, so uh, uh, he, uh, all, every time he just told us so many stories that occurred at that time. Uh, he just took us to a, a place that is so near to, to uh, uh, his uh, town and some Sometimes we all together, yeah, I mean which, my family, my, my, my sisters and the brothers, we just go there. Yeah, we go, we go there to, hello, can you hear me? What, what, yeah, yeah, yeah well, I'm asking, what is the name of the town? What is the name of the village? In, in Persheba, it is, it is called Tal Jamma. It is called Jamma, it is uh, in Persheba. And we just go there here. Uh, I live here in Deir el Balah, and we just go so close to the, the, the fence, not that close, but you know, like uh, 700 meters. And then he told us that if you look to that rock uh, or that uh, kind of mountain, uh, and then uh, th this, is, uh, this is the place that we used to, uh, I used to live, and uh, I left everything behind me. And uh, his grand, his parents, uh, uh, you know, uh, things, everything uh, was behind them. Uh, so uh, I feel actually so. So uh, when, when, whenever my my father told me uh, uh, about the, these stories and in his land, I feel that I just pray that this the, the day of returning to our homes, that this day will very, come very soon before you know and uh, my father witnessed this day uh before uh you know before uh died of, you know uh so uh actually um we just hope that uh, this occupation ends soon and i'm sure that uh, uh, the the occupation will not last for uh, forever because uh, during the, the 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 you know during the the last decades or um, uh, so many occupation occurred here in Palestine, but uh, uh, every, all of them, you know, just ended. And I'm sure that the Israeli occupation will end very soon uh, due to the, uh, the work of the human, uh, the, the, the people, the free world, uh, the free people who work for the humanity uh, here in Palestine. Yeah. yeah, but you're uh, you're 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 an act you're an activist and a journalist. Yeah. Uh, talk more about the activism that's going to bring us there. I mean, I understand the hope, of course, the hope that it will end soon. But in terms of in terms of the activism, in terms of the work as a journalist, do you yeah. see that bringing it closer? And and how? Yeah, I see. I yeah, I see it very close because as I told you uh, before uh, that just a few years uh, ago we just find like just very few people who support Palestinians who know what does it mean Palestine what the, wh who are the Palestinians uh, and now I just see so many across the world they just you know they are actually enlightened by the activists uh, whether in Palestine or outside uh, I just see uh, like uh, 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 you know uh, I mean I mean uh, the, the people who are working for Palestine and the free world the free people who work for Palestine I just uh, I do believe um, that the, the, those people help uh, the Palestinians here the Palestinian activists here in Palestine help them to convey their message outside Palestine. So right now we can say that the Palestinian cause uh, just in the top of stories of, of, of so many uh, uh, publications, we find like uh, several publications that only report about Palestine. So many people in the West or even in, in, in America itself, they know about Palestine. And I know some, some of, of uh, American actors 
relative came here into Gaza and I met them in person. Uh, when they called, it told me that uh, that we hear in the our media that you the Palestinians are terrorists. So when we just enter Palestine into the Gaza Strip, we just look for tourists here and here. He, he just telling me this thing, yeah, you know. But uh, they, uh, most of them, told me that uh, what we saw here in Gaza is something, you know, uh, is something that is so cool. We never uh, witnessed it, or we never heard about it in the mainstream media. And then those activists who came to Gaza, who came to Palestine, they just uh, take the, uh, I mean, they just uh, they take the, the, whatever they hear, whatever they witness here in Palestine, and then they uh, transfer the message outside to their people, whether in America or in the Western, other Western uh, communities. So this is, uh, I can say that the, the, the activists and the, the journalists actually they play like a very important uh, role in, in enlightening the people across the world about Palestine, about the, what the Palestinian are daily faces from uh, uh, from the Israeli occupation uh, forces. So um, yeah, I totally believe that uh, those people and those journalists, those, uh, those activists, uh, actually they uh, they are. They do, and uh, they did, and they do, and I'm sure that they will do. And if we're talking, for example, about the BDS, they are just uh, doing a very great job indeed. And uh, all of the people across the world, they just uh, trust them, and they just know uh, uh, about, them, about them, about Palestine. They just know about Palestine from them. So they are just, uh, uh, I'm, I'm so happy that uh, so many across the world know exactly what is happening and they are yeah i'm sure that there is a very powerful uh you know uh, people outside i mean the zionists there in america or across the world they are just work like uh you know work hard just to uh, to distort uh, our image uh, in front of the people in the, in the u.s but uh, indeed i'm sure that i do believe that those people uh, I mean, the activists, the pro-Palestinian activists, they just uh, do a very great job. And really, uh, here I, I thank them so much. Uh, I want to seize this opportunity to, 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 thank, to, to thank you and to thank everybody who is uh, participating in this uh, webinar, uh, who I'm sure that I, I know some of them, that they work so hard just to uh, to let uh, their people know about Palestine. So I want to thank them uh, so much for this uh, this thing. And I'm sure that the, the freedom will come soon uh, because of them and because of their efforts uh, alongside with our efforts. Wow, thank you. Ahmed, I want to ask you also, as, a, as a, an activist and somebody who's organized and, you know, in, it, it, it created this uh, the March of Return, which of course was a huge thing. Uh, when you talk, when you think about the activism that is done outside of Palestine and inside of Palestine too, I suppose, uh, what would you tell people? How do we move this forward? How do we get to the future that we want, which is again, the decolonized Palestine, the right of return, um, which will allow people to live in peace eventually. Um, what kind of activism, uh, you know, for me, for example, I, I, I believe in BDS very much. And that's the, I believe, boycott, divestment, sanctions. I think Israel should be isolated, kicked out of the Olympics, things like that. That's what I think people outside should do. Well, what are your thoughts on that? What, what, what would you tell people? Yeah, uh, I think the main idea to uh, make Israel feel that uh, the continuation of its occupation and its uh, racial is, is very high because Israel until it feels that it's, it will not be forced to pay the price of its violations and of its occupation. So we should make Israel feel that uh, the continuation of its policies, the continuation of the racial Israel means that 
it it cannot uh, 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 find uh, uh, the, the normal uh, uh, situation politically and economically and in all the sides. And we should uh, uh, make the world, uh, or we should push the world uh, toward uh, a feeling that uh, uh, the, the real element is Oh, what happened? Ahmad? I think we lost Ahmad. Uh, his his video just cut out, made probably connection, uh, but I'll, I'll get in touch with him and see if we can get it back in. Oh, right. he's, yeah, he's, he's, back. he's back. Oh, he's yes. back. Okay, he's you're back. 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 Yes. Go ahead, continue, please. Ahmed? I think there is trouble yeah. in his connection. Yeah, yeah but he looks like he's back. Let's wait a minute, see if he can uh, finish his thought. <laughs> Ahmed, are you back? I'm back. Okay, I'm good. Please, con please continue. Yeah. Please continue. Okay, so uh, we, we should show the world uh, to to feel that uh, it's something to the Israeli policies, the Israeli occupation uh, uh, doesn't help in the uh, settlement and uh, building the peace among the world. This is the uh, 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 the main idea, and we we can express the idea. We can uh, 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 form this idea uh, uh, in many ways, as you mentioned. Uh, the BDS, I, the BDS is better. The BDS is not an aggressive uh, 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 work. The BDS is a moral work, a necessary a necessary moral work. To, uh, uh, to push Israel to respect the human rights and to respect the international law, uh, and also the, how how to to build the the, the cons of, of uh, uh, the, 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 the 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 world conscious or the global conscious towards that uh, we should end this time that uh, 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 allowed for some countries. Uh, on peoples to uh, 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 to occupy or commit injustice against us only because they are different from them on their uh, uh, religion or, or their color or their ethnicity. This crime, this is horrible. Imagine this, now we are in 21st century. So uh, uh, I, I think we should uh, uh, build this uh, global uh, uh, opinion in this that we don't want we, 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 we want to make the peace but to make the peace you should end the suffering you should end the system the regimes of the occupation and the racial discrimination like Israel makes now uh, if 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 we said for that, imagine that the people are are uh, 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 treated uh, according to their color, it's 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 horrible. Uh, uh, we we cannot imagine this, but but actually this happens until now. Why Israel, as example, prevent me as a Palestinian refugee when protest in the fence of this prison? The Gaza Strip prison. Why it uh, uh, prevent me to return to my home? And this is the resolution of the United Nations. And this is the normal uh, human right. My human right. There is no any reason but one reason because I'm non-Jew. And sure, we 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 don't have the Jewish people uh, from the the side that Jews. We have the problem with the colonialism, with the, the, the settlement, the occupation. But Israel, it, to mix, it try to conflate uh, uh, between the, 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 its 
racism and its uh, patient and Ask them again. Mm. Let's give another minute. See if he comes back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Michael, actually, I, I have to, uh, until Ahmed get back, uh, actually, there is uh, something I always ask for. I mean, uh, for the people, the activists, I mean, for the journalists who work in the mainstream media, I always invite them to come to Palestine, to visit Palestine, to report exactly what is happening here. They can just see the injustice by themselves, and then they can, you know, they can be the judge. You know, they don't have to talk about Palestine while they are in their countries. You know, they know nothing about Palestine. And I'm, I'm inviting them to come to Palestine and they can see by themselves what is happening here on the ground uh, from the Israeli occupation. Like we, they can see the, the, the siege, they can see the, the, the checkpoints that the, the Israeli forces just, uh, you know, erected in the West Bank and even in Jerusalem. Uh, they can just see the, 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 you know, the brutality here in Palestine. So I'm inviting them all to come and just have the courage to come to Palestine. Like, uh, I know so many journalists came here. And uh, in fact, for example, um, I can't remember her name. I, I know that uh, so many uh, famous journalists, they have, they had the, the, the idea that Palestinians are terrorists, and when we go to Palestine, we are gonna get killed. But when they come to Palestine, they saw that they saw the truth, and then when they get back to their country, they were so frank. They told the, their people that uh, we saw uh, the the just there in Palestine. We saw the oppressive. We saw uh, uh, many horrible things occurred in Palestine because of occupation uh, forces. So I, I invite this to do like what uh, those journalists who came to Palestine, uh, they, they know the, exactly what is happening here and then they report the truth uh, to their countries and then they uh, build their own websites, they build their own broadcast just to enlighten the people uh, about exactly what is happening uh, here. So yeah, this I is agree. my thought. Yeah. I, th yeah. I agree. I think, I think visiting Palestine for journalists, for activists is a incredibly, it's very, very, very important. Uh, first of all, it's an amazing country, yeah. but also yeah. to know exactly what is happening, you must visit uh, and visit Palestine, not, not the privileged Israeli side necessarily, but visit uh, Palestine. You know, Jamil, I think we should, uh, yeah. I know we lost Ahmed, but I think we should start with a Q&A. So uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, let's bring up the questions. And, um, if Ahmed is back, that'll be great. If not, then we'll have to do it. Uh, we'll give them all to Afat. Yeah, I think, yeah. He lost, I think it looks like he lost connection. We're, try, we're trying to get him back in. So, okay. um, But we got a lot of questions. So um, we're not going to be able to get to everybody's, but... Um, I'll, I'll begin with this one. This one is from Stuart. Um, I'm on the board of the Gaza Mental Health Foundation. We partner with Dr. Yasser Abu uh, Jameh, the Gaza Community Mental Health Program, and with the UN Relief and Work Agency. Can you share your own others, your own or others' experiences on the situation, on how the situation in Gaza has impacted mental health? and how you think that manifests itself uh, mentally and physically. In addition, how has the coronavirus pandemic impacted Gaza? Thank you. Uh, yeah. That's very important. I think we have Ahmed back, it looks like. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. I'm sorry because the connection is not very good here. So I, I will try without video. Okay, did you hear the question? Uh, no, again, please. Uh, would you please read it again, uh, Jamil? 
Yeah, the question is from Stuart. I'm on the board of the Gaza Mental Health Foundation. Uh, we have partnered with Dr. Yasser uh, and the Gaza Community Mental Health Program and with the UN Relief Work Agency. Can you share your own or others' experiences on how the situation in Gaza has impacted mental health and how you think that manifests itself mentally and physically? In addition, how has the coronavirus impacted Gaza? Well, Fai, you want to start? Yeah. Naam. Is the question on the effect of the on the effect of the the effect of the effect Yes, sure. The, the people in Gaza here, they, they, they don't live a normal life. They, they, they live a life without uh, basic, uh, basic uh, uh, rights. Imagine that the people, uh, they cannot move but only on, on, on one hour by, the, the, by the, the car from the fence to the fence. And when they cut Gaza Strip from the sea until the east fence, it the car only 15 minutes. This is the, the place where 2.2 uh, million people live here. They, uh, they cannot uh, find work, they cannot uh, build uh, uh, their, their, their future, they cannot find hope. So this, yes, this is psychologically is very dangerous. And I mentioned in the beginning that Israel killed Israel kills us by bullets, but it also kills by uh, isolating us from, from our uh, human connection. When the uh, majority of the youth in Gaza never meet any other person from other culture, from other language, they never uh, uh, traveled outside of Gaza, they never, uh, they, uh, a lot of uh, youth, they they are about 35 years old and they cannot find a place to live they cannot find the ability to 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 get married you you cannot uh, you cannot ex you, you cannot imagine that they live normal life uh, yes the, the situation is very horrible and this have also unfortunately yes, sometimes times have social problems here it raise the the social and the uh, uh, depression and sometimes uh, uh, the youth they kill themselves uh, committed suicide and this, this is is uh, 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 sounds strange in Gaza Strip because for about uh, a decade from now or a decade and a half we we didn't hear uh, many uh, uh, situations of society in Gaza, but now when the youth they don't uh, 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 they cannot find their basic necessities, so this push them toward the despair. And they, they, at that time, at that situation, they don't have uh, but two choices: the choice to despair, to uh, suicide, to die or the other uh, choice to uh, resist, to try to scream. And this, uh, this is the meaning of the March of Return. It was an expression of the will of life against the despair and against the slow death here in, in Gaza. And uh, the question was also about the situation with uh, COVID-19. Yeah, uh, until now, uh, the situation really the uh, COVID-19 in Gaza Strip is un under the, uh, the control and we hope it will be still under the control because Gaza uh, uh, cannot be more uh, disasters here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I, I think this is of the... Uh, of the hitting uh, and the, they know uh, a lot of movement from Gaza to outside or from outside to Gaza. and some people here days uh, it's like a joke that this is maybe 
the uh, only uh, advantage for the blockade, the only advantage for the blockade that it limited, at least now, limited <laughs> the arrival of the COVID-19 uh, to Gaza Strip. But uh, if the, uh, uh, the disaster uh, happened, and we hope it will not uh, happen, if it happened and if uh, this uh, 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 if if this uh, uh, epidemic uh, uh, outbreak Gaza, it will a double disaster because Gaza does the uh, basic uh, uh, doesn't have the enough uh, uh, medical materials to treat with uh, uh, and you know every equipment every uh, material we should, uh, the people here in Gaza and the ministries here in Gaza and the organizations in Gaza uh, uh, wait long time, sometimes many uh, uh, long the Israeli permit to allow it to enter uh, to Gaza. Okay, thank you. Next question, Jamia. Sure, uh, okay, this one is from Paula. She says, thank you, Wafa and Ahmed. Can you speak to how Gaza is seeing the protests here in the U.S. around George Floyd's murder and Black Lives Matter? Oh, yeah, Wafa, what are people saying about that? The George Floyd... Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Gaza, you know, support uh, the, 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 the action that the Black Lives Matter, you know, just uh, act. Uh, indeed, the, the people here are so sympathy with uh, the, 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 the Black Lives Matters, and uh, indeed here, uh, so many actions uh, occurred to support them, and uh, as well to to make like um, uh, like a comparison in what the Israeli uh, are doing for Palestinians and what the Americans are doing for their own people. Uh, so they they know that the Israelis uh, are just uh, strengthening and uh, administration. So they are the same. Uh, they are the the American just uh, kill their uh, uh, their own people, and here the Israeli occupation uh, humiliate the Palestinians every single day. And actually, there are so many uh, artists here. They just uh, draw the, the, the George picture on the walls and they did actually uh, so many uh, uh, things like to, to, uh, to support them to, uh, to, because they actually, they, they just um, uh, know what, it, what does it mean to be oppressed, to, be, to, live, to live under such conditions. So they are well know. They are well aware of uh, of what happened to George, and uh, they are following actually the news uh, there because they know that uh, the American administration are the one who, who uh, they are considered like the lifeline for the Israeli forces who are killed Palestinians every single day. So they just. Um, yeah, support them and uh, do many things for support. Yeah. yeah. And of course, there's a connection. There's another connection because the American yeah. uh, police officers go to learn from the Israeli uh, security forces. So they travel to learn and be trained by the Israeli security forces. So there is a connection, a very yeah. Yeah. connection there as well. Uh, go ahead, Jamil. What's next? Okay, hey, next is a question from Amir. Uh, my question is whether there is a charitable group where we can contribute uh, to for the people of Gaza. We have received a lot of requests on Twitter, but we are not sure how authentic those requests are. Requests for money? I think individual messages received on Twitter about Amir is wondering about what, what are the most, you know, uh, what are charitable recommendations that uh, Ahmed and, and Wafat can recommend that so America... People want to give, so if people want to donate money for Gaza, which organizations do you recommend? Which are the best organizations, the best NGOs? Do you have any, any idea, Ahmed or Wafat? Yeah, uh, now I don't have a specific uh, uh, suggestions, but I... Uh, uh, I to, to search uh, uh, 
about the uh, uh, organizations uh, they have uh, uh, inter uh, in uh, in that of the uh, the here the medical uh, especially the me the medical uh, materials or sent to uh, Gaza Strip uh, and uh, yes uh, and also to make sure that they have a credibility here in Gaza inside Gaza Strip. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry because I cannot, uh, uh, I, I, I don't have a lot of uh, recommendations now, but uh, uh, he can ask uh, and make sure that this uh, NGOs, it, it can send the medicine and the materials to Gaza and uh, it has credibility here in Gaza. Wafa, well, do you want to add anything? Today. Yeah, actually, I uh, I second Ahmed. Uh, actually, I don't have uh, like specific names in right now, but uh, of course, uh, if they want to do anything, they can just help uh, the the medical OS or uh, they can provide like a medical uh, or medicine for the people because they are like uh, so many lack. Uh, they, there is like lack here in medicine and the stuff like medical material and the stuff so yeah but if I, if I have like in the coming days if I search I will send to Jamil or to you Michael or whatever you know I can send some uh, names inshallah well there's a uh, Palestine Children Relief Fund PCRF um, a very good organization I know that they go to Gaza they've built a uh, um, they even built a children's uh, a pediatric cancer uh, ward in, in Gaza. So they do ter terrific work. We did a, uh, a, uh, a podcast with Steve Sosabi, who heads the PCRF. He's in Palestine. It's a, you know, it's, it's a Palestine-based uh, NGO, uh, and they do tremendous work. They have a track record. They've been doing it for a very long time. So personally, I, I know them, and I would... Uh, Highly recommend working uh, and sending money to PCRF, and you can just find them. Uh, I'm sure uh, Michael will put the will put their uh, put their link in the chat. But uh, that's I know that they they bring in, they take care of patients, they bring in equipment, they do everything that's needed. Okay, next, good questions. Okay, the next question is from Skip. Uh, the question is, what's happening now with the Great March? What might be next for that movement? Yeah. Uh, 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 the Great March uh, uh, of Return uh, was uh, 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 stopped on the. What's the name of the Yofa? Shua? Suspended. Suspended, yes. Yes, it's, it's not sub, uh, stopped, it's suspended uh, on the uh, end of uh, December uh, last year. Uh, and because of the. Uh, uh, because the uh, inside assessment here in Palestine and also after that because of the COVID-19. Uh, I think uh, we as Palestinians, we, uh, we need now to form a strategy for struggle uh, against the annexation, against the racism, against the occupation uh, in Gaza Strip and also in West Bank because Israel is, uh, uh, sounds very uh, uh, insist, uh, uh, insisting to go uh, ahead to annex the West Bank and uh, to, uh, uh, to it, it tries to to end the Palestinian cause. So uh, yes, the, even if the March of Return uh, was ended, uh, we as Palestinians under uh, the occupation and under the suffering, the historic suffering, we uh, should continue to struggle uh, for our freedom and for the return of the refugees. Okay, we have time for one more, Jamil, or even two more maybe. Yeah, yeah, okay. So this one is from Bill. Uh, when the occupation ends and Palestinians become free to return, what strategies do you have to deal with the very specific issues, such as the fact that other people may be living in their former home, or that their former home or village may have been destroyed? Uh, yes, 
uh, I, I, I personally, I, I will not speak uh, on behalf of the Palestinian people here. I personally uh, believe in the one democratic state. Every uh, one can live uh, uh, beside the others uh, based on equality and based on equal uh, rights. Uh, and uh, we, we, our, our main problem is not with the persons. Our main problem is with the system now. The system of the occupation and the system of uh, of the apartheid is the apartheid. So when we call, when this uh, uh, regime is collapsed, then after that we can find uh, uh, forms and we can find solutions to uh, live. Uh, everyone can live based on equality with the others. Uh, th this is uh, w what you mentioned. I think it's technical uh, issues. Uh, we can uh, or we can uh, uh, create committees at the moment to uh, find solutions for this details, this details. But I try now to speak in the general frame. Yeah, you know, I uh, I, I agree with Ahmed. It's um... The, the idea of, a, of a, once Palestine is decolonized, once Palestine is a free democratic state, all of Palestine, in a post-Zionist uh, reality, that's the ground one, that's the first level, that's, that's ground zero. Then you can start talking about all these issues like, like uh, what happens with property, what happens with uh, refugees, how specifically you take care of each one of these issues. But um, that's going to happen, that can only happen once there is a real democracy and everybody's voices are heard and everybody can participate in the conversation. Well, and I think uh, every, every problem has solution, every problem has solution. Yeah. And we have, we have a lot of examples like Rwand in, South, uh, like Rwand in Africa, like South Africa, like other countries that they, uh, f they found solutions finally. But uh, we should have now the uh, we should have the will to end this unjust reality and to establish a new reality based on equality and justice. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one last question. Yeah. Okay. So this one, uh, the question is: How does the education system in Gaza help children understand freedom? This is a question directed to me or Wafa? Either, either one. Either one. Yeah. If you have, yeah. If you have an answer, Ahmed, you can go ahead. It's okay. 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 So the question is how the occupation teach the, the children to understand the education. The education. Uh, the edu the education, education. In Gaza. In the classrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Ali, uh, Ali. Yeah, I, I think the issue of the uh, freedom here in Palestine, it doesn't relate with the formal uh, 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 system, the formal education, but it's uh, relating to the culture that, that if, uh, everywhere, every ha home, every... As I mentioned in the beginning, every house here in Palestine, not only in Gaza Strip, if you knock the door of any uh, house, you sure you will find a tragedy find a story a sad story in that uh, uh, in that house so the children here if they if they uh, try to, to forget or if we as fathers as parents uh, try to make our children forget the, their reality the sounds of the israeli war planes uh, 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 come and remind, uh, uh, remember them, uh, 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 remind the, them of this reality. The strikes, the uh, everywhere, every, every event. So this is our reality. We we cannot separate ourselves from this reality that all the details of our life. So my children, as example. 
they asked me if about a lot of questions. The only uh, answer for those many questions is the occupation, because of the occupation. Why we cannot move freely? Why uh, we cannot? Uh, uh, why we cannot travel through the sea? Why we cannot uh, uh, take a plane? Why we cannot travel normally to Egypt, as example? Why we cannot uh, go and uh, pray at the Aqsa Mosque, as example? Many, many, many questions. The only, uh, uh, only answer is the occupation because we are under occupation. So it's a matter the, the the freedom here. It's a matter of the life, our life in in all the sites and all the details. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree with Ahmed. Actually, we have uh, so many educated people here in Palestine. We have a very good uh, education here. Uh, our children are so educated and uh, and indeed, whenever there is like uh, opportunity to teach them about the freedom, actually the occupation itself, they teach them uh, how to live, you know, under siege, under occupation under uh, you know long hours of a prolonged uh, you know that the like, electricity uh just cut for so long hours and you know that the the water just uh, uh, uh over 90 percent of the water is undrinkable so these things uh, you know that our children they just uh, learn about this thing instead of uh, you know being educated about uh, freedom and the stuff of course they, they they will they like to live in a freedom they like to live like uh, uh, a, um, a very peaceful life a very decent life but unfortunately the occupation itself uh, teach them uh, that this is your life and this is uh, the life that you should uh, be living uh, under unfortunately Okay, well, I think our time is up. Um, I want to thank both of you, Ahmed and Wafa, for uh, an excellent conversation. Thank you for your time and for your wisdom and for your activism. And maybe more than anything, uh, the inspiration. You know, people ask me sometimes, you know, where do I get the energy? Where do I get the inspiration? And the answer is people like you, like Wafa, like Ahmed my Palestinian friends, activist friends who are in Palestine, you are the source of inspiration for everybody else. We look to you, how hard you work, how optimistic and, uh, and full of uh, hope you are. So of course, if you are full of hope and optimistic, then we must uh, fight even harder and be full of hope and optimism. Um, and uh, inshallah, we'll see you again soon, maybe in Gaza, we'll come and... Uh, Take you up on your uh, on your invitation. We'll find come and visit you in Gaza. Inshallah. In person, inshallah, very soon. <laughs> yes. And uh, Ahmed, you too. Maybe we'll see you again soon. And uh, Jamil, thank you. Michael, thank you to all the participants and all the questions and the chat. And we will have this uh, and all the people on Facebook. And we will have this available probably on uh, on my website on mikopella.com uh, in a couple of days. So thank you all. Maasalame. And uh, I'll see you Bye bye. Bye.